Greetings viewers, my name is Shiji Mark, presenting along with Eric Reef and Andrew Yeager our research topic on spintronics and spin valves. Starting with the fundamental physics presented by me, we first consider just a few forms of data storage. One form was punch cards, where pun holes were punched into cards in order to record static bits of information. We moved on to forms of random access memory, presented in the bottom right, where we have soft magnetic rings that could be magnetized clockwise or anti-clockwise via the current passing through the wires within them. On the bottom left, we have the first random access method of accounting and control uh, created by IBM. And this device had 50 disks that were 24 inches each, and the total weight of the device was actually an entire ton. It could only record about 5 megabytes of information compared to a much later version of the same type of device that can now record 4 terabytes. The top right shows a graph showing the logarithmic increase in our ability to store information. In the past 10 years, there's been a large bit revolution in the medium of storage information, and this is largely due to spintronics. Transistors are semiconductor devices that are used as a fundamental unit for computing, amplification, and a number of other electronic applications. Shown on the right is the progression of transistors used in computing. There is an atomic limit in our ability to shrink these devices, leading to research in other forms of computing, like in fields of spintronics. The cern glock experiment, performed in 1922, showed us the degree of electron spin. Assuming classical physics, an electron beam passing through a magnetic field will show a display that would be randomly oriented due to the random orientation of the magnetic moment of the electrons. Instead, the magnetic moments were reoriented to be in one of two positions, spin up and spin down. This experiment leads us to a basic understanding of spin-dependent scattering, where electrons traveling through a magnetic medium experiences a high or low resistance depending on the direction of magnetization. The left image is a simplified representation of the event where electrons of the same magnetic moment can pass easily through the magnetic boundary. The right image shows two instances of ferromagnetic material surrounding a layer of conductive material. When the ferromagnetic layers are magnetized in opposite directions, the electrons are strongly scattered, resulting in an extremely low current. When the layers are magnetized in the same direction, far less electrons are scattered, resulting in a far greater current flow, meaning a far lower resistance. This knowledge of physics has led to a number of devices and applications. Displayed in the top left is magnetoresistive random access memory, which stores data in magnetic domains. Scanning electron microscopy with polarization analysis is displayed on the right, where the color is the magnetic moment of the spin in the electron in the displayed image. A skiramon is a topologically stable field configuration of spin considered being used. Hello, I'm going to be discussing two applications of spintronics, which are spin valves and memory storage. The giant magnetoresistive effect, or GMR, was discovered in 1988 and it sparked the field of spintronics research. The uh, GMR device consists of thin film materials consisting of alternating ferromagnetic and non-magnetic layers. The resistance is lowest when magnetic moments in ferromagnetic layers are aligned and the resistance is highest when they are not aligned. This is how the head in a hard drive scans across the platter and reads and writes data in onto the drive. For writing, the resistance is changed by magnetizing a specific area of the platter, or the ferromagnetic layer of the hard drive. Reading is the inverse of the write process. Spin valves are GMR devices that consist of two ferromagnetic layers with a thin non-metallic element such as copper between the two layers. One layer has a fixed magnetization, also referred to as the pinned layer, while the other layer has varying magnetization, often referred to as the free layer. Changing the magnetization of the free layer from its minimum to its maximum value varies the resistance in the spin valve from 5 to 10 percent. Often an antiferromagnetic material is placed near the pin layer to make it resistant to up to moderate changes in magnetic field 
which may be from an outside source. A common example of the spin valve is the spin extraction spin valve, or SESV. In this configuration, shown below in figure 1, electrons flow from the non-magnetic contact, shown by negative I total, through the non-magnetic channel to the two ferromagnetic contacts B and C. The current extracted at B is spin dependent, so this changes the spin polarization in the non-magnetic material. As a result of this, contact C becomes magnetized. Changes in the contact magnetization changes the contact resistance, which changes IC based on the spin polarization of the drift current, which is spin polarized and is developed by the contact B. Dual spin extracted spin valves are a more advanced structure with three output currents that can be generated by varying the contact magnetization at multiple different contacts. Superconducting spin valves can be created based on controlling the superconducting state, which is then controlled by the magnetic state, much like the SESV structure. The topology can be adjusted in spin valves to allow for non-logical degrees of freedom, known as Majorana bound states, or MES. Controlling and utilizing these states requires altering the surface topology of the spin valve. Manipulation relies on STT, or the spin transfer torque, controlling the magnetic textures. Another application of spintronics is memory storage utilizing spintronics. Two examples of this are magnetic field sensors, which detect the magnetic field in a material, and MRAMs, which are non-volatile memory modules utilizing electron spin instead of electron charge. MRAM has multiple different write methods and one read method, being the tunnel magnetoresistive effect, which is based on the principle of how a head reads the platter of a hard drive using uh, the GMR effect. The l different write methods are the spin transfer torque method, or the STT. This is the oldest and the least energy efficient of these methods. The spin orbit torque is more energy efficient than the STT layer, as the charge current passes through an SOT channel in this method. The voltage controlled magnetic antistropy method, or the VCMA, uses pulse width control. This makes it more complex, harder to implement, and is not as commonly used as the other methods. The VCEC utilizes, or the voltage controlled exchange coupling method, utilizes bidirectional voltage control, where voltage is applied to two different sides of the device. The polarity of the voltage across the magnetic tunneling junction of the structure affects the magnetic direction. This different magnetization direction affects either a 0 or a 1 in this RAM module, which is very similar to how a traditional RAM module based on elect electron charge instead of electron spin is developed. Reading and writing data requires energy, and this needs to be optimized for MRAMs to become more widespread. MRAMs currently are using a lot more energy than an RAM module, and researchers are working on making them more energy efficient and more cost effective so they can become more widespread in commercial and consumer applica applications. Between these different methods, there are advantages and disadvantages to these. The most energy efficient is the VCEC method because it has lower write access energy than the other methods and it has a faster magnet switching time, meaning that it can also access data faster than the other methods. The ME has a higher cell density than the VCEC because of a smaller footprint required to store the data. This is due to the change to the different structure in the magnetoelectric effect being composed of multiferroic rather than a single ferroic material. The SOT has the lowest write energy of the methods, which would make it very useful in reducing the energy required for these MRAM devices to operate which is one of the challenges that needs to be conquered for this technology be that implemented in consumer applications. The STT, the oldest method, has the highest write energy, but the lowest read energy. However, it would not be applicable because of having a high write delay, meaning that it would take extra long to write data to and from these devices. And now I will go on to the semiconductor application using spintronics. While both metal and semiconductor materials can be used to make spintronic devices, the semiconductor devices are in a more theoretical stage, and this is due to detecting and manipulating the spin of the free electrons being um, rather difficult. It's, it's a complicated process, and 
these spin devices, once it, they are achieved, allow for more application of the semiconductors, as adding the spin value it, it gives more room and gives, adds more variables to what you can do with the semiconductor. Direct application is still being researched, while the most common semiconductor device being is the spin transistor. There are many different designs that have yet to be verified for those. Examples of these spin transistors are spin MOSFETs, a hot electron spin valve, and magnetic bipolar junctions. And other research that is being done with them is resonant tunneling diodes and diluted magnetic semiconductors. Um, and so with semiconductors, we have a potential method towards reaching quantum computing. And the quant a quantum computer can reach a stage where we, one of the best ways for us to achieve that is using um, spin semiconductors. Spin transports and spin decoherence are used in the initialization process of a quantum computer and then there are m multiple ways that we could that, that that could lead to the manipulation of the spin. Spin transistors can be used for the spin transport within the computer. A quantum well and bulk semiconductors are used for the spin decoherence. Controlling the spin properties have many different methods, with one of the most common of them being quantum dots. As of now, only architecture has been proposed using the quantum dots method, and decoherence has only been observed in quantum dots after many years, suggesting there's a lot of work and understanding that needs to be done to take to take a theoretical quantum computer to a functional one. And in conclusion to all of this, many applications of spintronics have been shown with applications on metal and semiconductor devices. Metal devices are more are used more in conjunction with GRM and are used in more practical application in comparison to semi semiconductor spintronics. Examples, spin valves and memory storage. Semiconductor device, devices have a lot of research that needs to go into them for direct application, but research towards, towards reaching the point where we can actually use them practically have been, has been going extremely well. Um, there have been great strides in recent years. And challenges in future spintronics applications, the lifetime of the electron spin, uh, the detection of the spin in nanostructures, the manipulation of spin in a short time intervals to enable fast operation of these devices, controlling the spin degree of freedom to allow for more possible spin states to be available, and applying spin manipulation to the different types of semiconductors. Um, and, all right, and that is our presentation. Thank you for thank you for your time.